welcome. This lesson is about how to learn and practice the natural minor scale guitar patterns. There's a specific way to work on them to really hear them and internalize them and get them down. And that's what we're going to cover in this lesson. This lesson will show you all five of the natural minor scale guitar patterns so you can play in any minor key anywhere on the neck. If you follow this approach and learn and practice these in this way, you will have a much easier time applying these scale shapes to real music, knowing where you are on the fretboard and knowing where you are in a minor key. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach a ton about music theory and mapping out the fretboard and practice strategies. My last video was on how to map out and practice and internalize the five major scale guitar forms. In that video, I covered a ton about this unique way of practicing scales to really get them down, to really internalize them, this practice approach that really works. So if you like the way that we end up covering the minor scale guitar patterns in this lesson, I recommend going back and checking out the major scale guitar patterns video as well. There's a little extra information that might be helpful. Plus you can double check to see how well you know the major scale guitar forms. So here are the five natural minor scale guitar patterns. We wanna know all of these equally well. Well, these are most often called patterns, but they also are called scale forms or scale positions or scale shapes. Those are all interchangeable. There are other types of scale patterns and scale forms and other ways to work on scales, but at the very least, we want to make sure that we are comfortable with these five particular minor scale guitar patterns. All five patterns here are written as the C natural minor scale, but you can move them around to play in any minor key. Here's why we need a special approach when working on scales on the guitar. We're faced with kind of a unique a dilemma when working on scales on the guitar because we have these positions, these shapes that we're looking at right now. When we're playing in positions with these scale forms or these scale shapes, um, we automatically don't have the root as the lowest note or the highest note. So we just have this collection of notes. And if we just play it from the lowest to the highest and back, we don't actually get the sound of the scale that we're necessarily intending to play. For most instruments that don't play in positions like this, it wouldn't make any sense for them to randomly uh, play a scale without going from the root to the root, without playing the root on the bottom and the top, unless they're doing a special exercise that specifically requires that or working on modes. Yet on the guitar, we often just practice these scale shapes up and down and up and down from lowest note to highest note without really paying attention specifically to where the root is, not having that crystal clear, not hearing those roots in a certain way. We're just playing these physical forms. And that's a little bit why it's hard to apply it to real music or to make it sound like music or break out of just practicing scales. The secret to really internalizing these and kind of unlocking listening to them is targeting the root in a very specific way. We're gonna play these scale forms with something that I call the root to root exercise or the root to root method. And that's what we're doing in this whole series of um, unlocking different scale types. And that's what we're doing with the natural minor scale today. This really is the secret to opening up and hearing the sound of the scale and identifying what it is and why it exists. And then we can take a physical scale form and actually play multiple different types of scales with that one physical scale form. We can treat it as other types of tonalities instead of just a grouping of notes and that's it. For example, these five natural minor scale patterns are the exact same physical scale forms as the five major scale forms. And those are the ones that I covered in the last lesson. So these are the exact same five physical shapes. So when is it one and when is it the other? How does it make sense that we have major scale, minor scale, same notes? It is 100% how we treat them and where we're thinking of home base, what note we're thinking of as the root and how we're treating it as the root and hearing it as the root. So let's get into the exercise. Here are the rules to practicing a scale with the root to root method. Doing it this way makes all the difference in the world. And I covered these in the last video as well. And I'm gonna cover these rules in every video in this series because well, we can definitely afford to hear something like this multiple times to internalize it. But also I want someone to just be able to watch the one scale type that they wanna learn and get all the same information. So we're gonna be going over this if you're watching multiple of these. If this is just the scale type you wanna learn, this is the secret sauce right here, this formula. We want to, number one, start on the root. Okay, we wanna start on the lowest root of the scale form that we're working on. Number two, we want to play the entire scale form. Number three, when you land on a root, you repeat the root, and then you keep going in that direction that you were going. You can pause when you repeat the root, or not, if you don't have to. I kind of like to pause a little bit in time or not if you're playing out of time. But you repeat either way, you repeat the root and keep going whatever direction you were going. Number four, you don't repeat any other notes that are not 
the root. So we don't want to repeat the note that is the lowest note and the highest note of the scale form, which is very common to just kind of do that when we're practicing it in a physical way. But we don't want to repeat those outside notes. We just want to bounce right off of them unless they happen to be the root. And lastly, we want to end on the same root that we started on after playing the entire scale form. So after going below the root, playing everything that's below it, if there are notes below it, and then coming back around, landing on that same root that we started on. That's it. That's how it works. Now I'm just going to demonstrate through doing exactly that on all five of these natural minor scale guitar patterns. And this is exactly how I want you to be able to do it as well. If you're familiar with the sound of the major scale and the fact that the major scale is the same physical shape as any one of these natural minor scale patterns, then notice how when I play them this way, the same scale form as a major scale, when I play them this way, they sound distinctly minor. Once you have that down, here are some other steps you can take to master these scale forms even more. The first thing is to definitely do that same thing in multiple keys. Do it in all 12 keys if possible. You're going to play those exact same shapes in those exact same ways. You're just, they're all going to shift around so the root is on a different note. And whatever note that root is, that's the scale, that's the key you're playing in. The second thing to do is to practice your scales with melodic patterns, at least a few melodic patterns. Definitely the first one I always recommend is melodic thirds. That's where you're going up a third, skipping a note, and then coming back down one, going up another note. So with that first scale form, starting on the lowest note, up a third, down a note, up a third, down a note, up a third, down a note. playing melodic patterns like I did there, you don't have to start on the root. You don't have to do a root to root thing. The root to root thing is its own exercise. We're already doing that for the purpose of finding those roots, hearing them, really internalizing them. The uh, melodic patterns uh, exercises are just to be able to do that with anywhere within the scale in the whole scale form. For more about which melodic patterns to work on, grab my free PDF of the top three pentatonic scale melodic patterns. There's a link to that in the description. The third thing to do is just make sure you can play the scales with a metronome at any pace, but just so you can do it in time. And uh, that's an important thing to test out so you're not hesitating between notes somewhere. And the fourth thing to do to continue to master scales is to improvise with them. And now that you have your roots internalized, when you're playing natural minor scale, you want to improvise with them and return to the root regularly, come back to the root regularly, really target it. When you're using these same scale forms, but you're actually thinking of it as the major scale patterns, then you want to return to the major scale root and it will have a very different sound, just like the root to root exercise creates that different sound. Three other quick things to take into consideration as you're working on these scales. Try to make sure you're by default alternate picking down up alternating if you're using a pick or alternating between two fingers if you are using finger style. Another thing is to just watch out for your velocity, how hard you're striking and listening for buzzes and just pay attention to your tone. A lot of times we can play more aggressively than we need to and get some rattling that we're not noticing at first. And then the third thing is to just try to play legato with the notes connected so there aren't noticeable gaps between the notes as you play. If you work on the five natural minor scale guitar patterns, like we talked about in this way, you will definitely be able to learn music faster, remember it longer, avoid getting lost on the fretboard, create melodies easier, and you'll start to see how nearly every single thing we play is connected to and comes back to scale shapes, scale forms, and scale structures. 
any scale we want to work on we want to know in this way so i'm going to do several more videos on other scale types demonstrating this same process through my next video is going to be on the major pentatonic scale and there's a link in the description that will link you to a playlist of the series of all of these scale videos as i mentioned if you want to get a few melodic patterns exercises that are written out with notation and tab grab my free pdf of the top three melodic patterns for pentatonic scales two of those patterns can apply to any scale one of them is just for pentatonic scales but it's a nice little simple sheet that just has three exercises that uh, really can make all the difference when improvising to make solos sound a little less like scales and more like melodies just go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns that's number three patterns or use the link in the description that's it for this lesson make sure you subscribed and you hit the bell happy scale practicing thanks for watching take care